Hello and welcome to The Daily Decrypt. My name is Francesca and I am your guest host. Today's episode is being brought to you by Dash. Due to my global reputation in research and renowned skills as a technical analyst, Amanda has asked me to speak with you today about a cryptocurrency called Ethereum. Now I admit I had not before heard of Ethereum and so I present to you my initial findings here. Let's just start from the beginning, shall we? Now, Ethereum, it would appear, has a very ambitious mission indeed, which is to replace the way we experience the internet currently. That is to say, to take the processes of agreements, contracts, communications, interactions, which now happen on central web servers, and to change the hosting of that data to be hosted instead by a global network of peers. To put it more simply, whereas Bitcoin decentralized the exchange of value from person to person online, Ethereum seeks to decentralize all interactions which happen person to person online. Now let's dig into the brass tacks. Ethereum runs on a blockchain and its native currency is Ether. Its system is currently running on 1400 nodes around the world. The Ethereum blockchain was launched in spring of 2015. It's seeing 700 transactions per hour, roughly, and its average block time is 17 seconds. Moving on, what are the use cases of Ethereum? As I said, ambitious indeed. In most blockchain-based currencies, the first and only application is currency. In still others, you'll find the possibility of user-issued asset tokens, which can be used to represent shares in a company or membership of your private club, so on and so forth. These tokens could even represent ownership of physical assets, that sort of thing. And it would appear that Ethereum, while seeking to offer all of these things, seeks first and foremost to be a platform by developers for developers. Now what does that mean? Developers of what? Well, in this case, developers of smart contracts and developers of decentralized applications or dApps. Let me give you an example of some of the dApps which are actually live on the Ethereum blockchain. We have a game here called Ether Dice, and it is, you guessed it, a dice game that's run on the Ethereum blockchain. We have Oracleize, which is a way to make contracts. We have the Ethereum alarm clock, which notifies you if and when you have contract calls come in. We have the group Gnosis, which is a prediction market. And now while all of these sound very interesting, it must be remembered that in its current state, there is almost no user interface software for the average person to interact with these sorts of applications. Individuals currently interacting with these fancy dApps are almost invariably doing so from the command line of their computer and running an Ethereum full node at home. One would not be wrong in saying at this point that Ethereum is truly nerd money. Let's talk a bit about Ethereum's creation and availability. Ethereum is currently mined via the proof-of-work algorithm. Here is an example of a mine in a low-cost electricity area where someone is earning themselves a lot of Ethereum indeed. However, word around the Ethereum forums is that sometime in 2016, the hard code of Ethereum will be changed to disincentivize proof-of-work mining and incentivize the switch to proof-of-stake. There is no hard-coded limit on the number of Ether that will ever be produced, and so in its current state, Ethereum is infinitely inflationary. I'd love to tell you how many Ether are being rewarded per block, but it would appear that my research skills have met their match in this particular instance. <clears throat> Ethereum is currently available for purchase at many popular online exchanges, but you will often notice that the exchanges notify you before you execute your trade that Ethereum is still considered unstable. Who is betting on the project thus far in terms of business models? You may have heard of the prediction market, Aga, or the rental platform for the sharing economy, Slocket. Decentralized autonomous organizations such as these are building entire business models on Ethereum, though neither of them has released a version 1 of their product as of yet. And funding. Development of Ethereum is funded by a foundation. The foundation's initial funds came from an Ethereum token pre-sale in late 2014, in which Bitcoin users around the world purchased Ethereum tokens ahead of time to the tune of 21 million US dollars. 
it is unclear how the Foundation plans to continue to fund itself going forward. And this brings me to the end, and perhaps the most important part to know about Ethereum, that it is considered to be Turing complete, which means it is programmable in any computing language. If you are the sort of person who knows a programming language or two, and you would like to experiment with creating contracts or dApps on the Ethereum blockchain, the website ethereum101.org was presumably designed just for you. And that's all I have time for today. Today's episode has been brought to you by Dash. If you're looking to profit from joining the Dash infrastructure, it is mineable via CPU or GPU. Additionally, investors may be interested to become masternodes who are paid to both hold Dash collateral and perform passive network services. You can learn more about this and Dash's future plans at dash.org slash evolution. The Daily Decrypt is an independent member of the LTB network, or so I'm told. They have a podcast for you there if you like, and you are encouraged to subscribe to their channel. That's all then. Very well. Thank you and good day. Thank you.